we have already talked about discourse. We have discussed conversation analysis, for example. That is also a kind of discourse. Use of language beyond sentence level. This is discourse. It can be oral, it can be written, it can be multimodal. For example, the talk you see uh, at some TV show. So there is uh, voice, there is language, there is some movement, background music, etc. So more than one mode uh, is involved. This is multimodal discourse. Okay, discourse is defined. A discourse is gendered. When we use the term gendered, it means we give preference of one gender, we give preference to one gender, one sex over the other. When we do this, this is genderization, this is gendered. This something is gendered. So discourse is gendered if it shows interactional dominance, dominance in interaction of one sex, where in mixed sense uh, sex conversation, where both sexes are talking with each other, men and women are talking, and in that interaction, one sex dominates the other. This is the gendered discourse. So we have defined two terms right in the beginning. What is discourse and when discourse is gendered or genderized? Researchers note that men dominate conversation. It means in this way, then uh, discourse is gendered. For example, they talk more than women, they interrupt the talk more than women. They give few minimal responses. Now, when we talk, our talk continues. When we get a response of the audience, response of the addressee, though that response is in uh, gestural form, right? So that uh, that response, in fact, uh, encourages us to talk more. Okay. So, if ever men give response, that is very minimal response. That needs further clarification, but they won't give because they don't allow questioning. Okay. They, and they themselves ask few questions because they are in habit of taking reports. They don't think themselves answerable, questionable, especially by the opposite sex. So it means when they talk, in interaction they dominate. Traditionally, gender discourse shows male domination and determinist stance on gender. Because according to gender ideology, gender order of a society, the cultural notions about the roles of gender, even in interaction their roles are determined. So this determination in talk has roots in determination, cultural determination of the roles in culture and society. Discourse analysis has double function. Now, if this is the case, so how can discourse analysis help us to find out how discourse is gendered? But when we do this analysis, so here researchers point out that it does two functions simultaneously at the same time. Number one, its focus is on gendered positioning of men and women. One is uh, dominating, the other is dominated. This is gender positioning in talk. The consistent focus on this gender positioning supports gender difference. So when discourse analysts always consistently focus on finding out where one sex is positioned in interaction, so by doing this 
actually what they are doing they are consciously or unconsciously supporting this gender difference in thought. A process of gendering not only they point out that here positions are different with reference to sex, but they are also gendering, they are also supporting this gender difference and gender position. This is the double function of discourse analysis. For example, discourse analysis pointed out sexism in language. We have already hinted at sexist language especially with reference to English. This language shows clearly that when we use English language, we give preference to males. Use of generic he, for example, for both men and women is one clearest example of this sexism. It means that uh, women they do not have their own independent separate identity or entity. They are represented by generic he by men only, but we call it gendering. Now the condition when discourse analysis leads to gendering this is the point we have said discourse analysis performs double function, but now the point comes, the second function that is of gendering takes place only when there is rejection and resistance. But we call it gendering if analysis of discourse affects thoughts of the audience and as a result of that effect audience may reject or react or resist. Now, when they point out that this sexism in language shows gender discrimination through language, so definitely this is gendering because it has reaction and especially feminists pointed it out in early in as early as in 1970s. Feminist literature, this is another example of resistance to gender discourses. They, the literary writers have rejected in their writings how discourse regulates thought of the readers. Okay. They have projected in their writings how discourse regulates thought of the readers. Because when you use terms where you place men before woman while writing, where you place pronoun he before she while writing. So, uh, def where you uh, give main role to males, where hero is male in your novels and short stories. So, definitely you are showing something which is affecting consciously or unconsciously the mind of the reader. So, you are promoting gender difference in this way. So, feminist literature writers they have pointed this out in male literature and that is why in response to that feminist literature came into being. It preserves power relations between men and women, this type of literature. And then in some previous module too, we have pointed it out and it is being reproduced here that every opposition, every difference metaphorically is taken as gender difference, difference between couples, difference between men and women and every powerful thing is attached with men and powerless and weak thing is attached with women. See this pairing, activity, passivity, the first uh, part of this opposition is for men. Son, for man and moon for woman, culture, nature, day for man, night for woman. See the connotations, the social meanings, deep meanings of these terms. Head for man, they have reason and they are rational. And heart for women, 
they have emotions and passions they are not rational and logical and same is the case with intelligible and sensitive sexist language is another example of gendering that meets the resistance uh, here i uh, give its examples chairman salesman mankind or all humanity and uh, uh, placing of pronouns see what these things show they show preference of males they show male domination they show patriarchy that we call and this is the thing which is resisted uh, and uh, reacted against by feminists okay now in response to this hypercorrection comes into be and now it is warned in uh, style books in uh, books on writing etc that avoid using sexist language and bec uh, because of this uh, now these days we use chair person instead of chair man human kind instead of man kind sales person instead of sales man or sales woman sales person etc we can conclude discourse has a dual link with the gender it represents the gender and it also constructs the gender 